call the Star City Council meeting to order this September 15, 2020 at 7 p.m. Can we all have you join me? Uh, put your flag on. To say the Pledge of Allegiance. There we go. Okay. Two flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Hershey. Present. Councilman Keyes. Here. Councilman Nielsen. Here. Councilwoman Jenna. I'm sorry. Salmonson, not <laughs> Jennifer. Here. Okay. I entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. On to item four, consent agenda. Anybody? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda uh, consisting of A, findings of facts and conclusion of the law, or A, Inspiration Homes, Irene Wilson, RZ2008, DA2007, B, Domestic Violence Proclamation, C, Constitution Week Proclamation, 4B, Final Plats, 4BA, Greendale Subdivision Final Plat Phase 3, FB 2013, and 4BB, Moon Valley Estates Final Plat, FB 20-14. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes? Um, uh, two items, first of all, um, when I vote on this, I will not be voting on item 4AA. I'll be excusing myself from that, but uh, also with your permission, I'd like to read the domestic violence proclamation um, in the record out loud. Absolutely, and then we'll have Ms. Jennifer read the Constitution Week proclamation as well. And we'll approve it. Domestic violence proclamation, whereas <laughs> domestic violence is defined as abusive behavior in a personal relationship that gives one member control and power over another through physical, emotional, sexual, economic, or uh, psychological actions or threats. And whereas an estimated one in four women and one in seven men will face domestic abuse in their lifetime, and in 2018 there were 5,284 calls for service related to domestic violence and sexual assault in Ada County. And whereas a range of services and programs exist throughout the Treasure Valley providing safety, healing, and freedom from domestic abuse and sexual assault, including forensics exams and medical care, secure shelters, court advocacy, counseling, child care, as well as case management. And whereas the City of Star is an important partner with the Women's and Children's Alliance and Faces of Hope to provide a safety net of crisis services and create a community where individuals thrive in safe, healthy relationships. Now, therefore, Mr. Mayor, I, Trevor H. Chadwick, Mayor of the City of Star, Idaho, to hereby join national and local officials Proclaiming October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the City of Star. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right, the Constitution Week Proclamation, uh, whereas September 17th, 2020, marks the 233rd anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention. And whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary, and to the patriotic celebrations which will comm commemorate the occasion. And whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America, designating September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week. Now, therefore, I, Trevor H. Chadwick, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Star in the counties of Ada and County, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week, and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us throughout, through this guardian of our liberties, remembering that lost rights may never be regained. In witness there, whereof I have 
here unto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of star to be affixed this 15th day of September of the year of our Lord 2020. <clears throat> Very good, thank you. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second with those readings. Any further discussion on the consent agenda? Um, yes, I have. Okay. Um, for item A, um, I will also be abstaining from A A. A A. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That motion carries. We're going to go on to item 5A, the 2018-2019 audit uh, by Jordan Zweier. I think he's on. Is he available? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm going to share my screen here. Perfect. And there should be the audit report should be showing up now. Um, so like the mayor said, I'm Jordan Swire from Swire John and Associates, and I'm going to briefly go over the audit for the year ended September 30th, 2019. Uh, if you have questions, please stop me. I'm more than happy to go into more detail. Otherwise, I'll just kind of hit some of the high points. So on number page one of the audit, this is the our opinion on your financial statements. Uh, so what this says, first of all, is that these are your financial statements. Don't, Everything. Uh, don't oh. that. Hang on a second, Jordan. I would rather have all sorts of noise than the lack of noise that we had before. So I don't want to touch any of the equipment back there on that. Thank you. Sorry, Jordan. Go ahead. Oh, no. You're fine. Then turn it down right there. I just see everybody looking at the machines back there. I just don't want anything back there. Very delicate setup. Do not touch. <laughs> I can talk a little quieter. Is that better? Yes. That's that's a little better. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so, all right. So this report, uh, what it says is that we looked at your financial statements. Uh, we looked at how things were being done and looked at, and that in our opinion, everything's materially correct. Uh, what that really means for you is that the financial statements you're looking at on a council meeting, you can rely on those. Those are accurately showing you what's going on. There, I'm going to jump to page five. Uh, this is your balance sheet for the year. Um, you can see the general fund ended with 2.1 million uh, in cash, a short-term investment of about $300,000. Uh, new this year is this investment in building the 1.8 million. That's the money that was loaned to Starfire to build the new building. That's uh, the amount that's owed back to you uh, if they decide to buy that out. Um, some receivables of property tax and other miscellaneous receivables, um, accounts payable of just over 322000 up there. Um, also new this year is the park impact fees fund. Um, those impact fees have to be segregated out um, because of the requirements of what they were used. Uh, so at the end of the year, you had one point, just over $1.3 million sitting there for those impact fees. <clears throat> Any question on that balance sheet? Chadwick. Uh, Councilman Nielsen. Yeah, I, I just like a, a point of clarification that um, we actually did not have a loan with Star Fire Department. That was a, a lease with an option to purchase, and they executed that option to purchase. You're correct. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't a loan, but um, and that amount there is what was initially um, City of Star put in the lease. Uh, plus the agree upon interest uh, it was that buyback agreement. Yeah, no question on the amount. I just wanted the record to be, be clear on that. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions for Mr. Jordan? Okay, no, sir. All right, uh, so then I'll jump here to page seven. This is your income statement uh, for the year. Uh, you see the general fund um, had uh, Net increase of $696,000 for the year. Uh, your impact fees had a net increase of $538,000 for the year. Um, then down here, these transfers, this is there was some impact fee uh, money from prior years that we moved to segregate it into its own fee, is what that's doing. Um, so that's what caused a little bit of a decrease in the fund balance of the general fund. But again, that wasn't from operations, it was 
because it's moving out just over 800,000 of impact fees. Any question on the income statement there? Any questions? All right. Okay, no, sir. All right, so there I'll move forward um, here. This is just a quick breakout of where uh, the money was sitting at September 30th. Uh, that external investment pool of 1.1 million, that's the money you had with the state LGIP. Uh, you had just over 400,000 in some money market accounts and then just over 300,000 in some short-term uh, seed certificates of deposits. Um, so that's at the end of the year, that's where your money was setting. The rest was setting in your checking account. From there, I'm gonna jump forward to page 17. This just shows what was budgeted versus what actually happened for the year. I uh, you see you budgeted to bring in 3.5 million. You actually brought in 4.7 or about 1.2 million more than was anticipated in the general fund. Um, you budgeted to bring it, to spend 3.8 million. You ended up spending 4 million or about 280,000 more than you had budgeted. Um, but looking at your budget, you had originally anticipated spending about 287 of your reserve. And again, just from operation, the reserve would have increased by almost 700,000. Um, and then you had that 800,000 moved over to the uh, impact fee fund. Um, from there, I'm just gonna point these out. This here on page 20 is a good report to go back and look at. This just breaks out into more detail um, the revenue items in the general fund, um, kind of what's going into each of those areas. And on the same vein, uh, 21 through 22, does the same thing and breaks out into more detail of where all those expenses are by line item. I won't take the time unless you have any you want me to go through, but a good report to go back and look at. That's the basic financial statements. Any questions on those? Any questions? Um, None. There's right. none sir. From there, oh, thank you. Uh, from there, um, every year um, in the state of Idaho, government entities, in addition to the financial audit, we also look at internal controls and in compliance. Uh, this is our report on that. Uh, we did not see any issues this year. Um, we felt that controls were in place. We saw evidence, multiple eyes looking at invoices and looking at bank statements, and we did not see any compliance issues. So overall, a good clean audit report, um, everything you know, all things considered went smooth on our side. We were able to get everything that we needed. Um, so no issues from us. That's all I have. Any questions for me um, on the audit or anything else? Any further questions of our auditor there? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Okay. No, sir. We're good. All right. So either at this meeting or next, you'll just want to make a motion to accept the audit report. Um, so well, I appreciate your time. You bet. We have it actually listed as item 6A for tonight's meeting already. So Okay. Uh, and I, I didn't have the agenda, so I wasn't sure. So. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> On item 5B, uh, proceed for Mr. Hampton. Councilman. All right, sir, go ahead. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, thanks for the invite back. Um, I'll make my comments very brief. Uh, we went over this, I think it was in November um, of last year, but we 
having a fiscal year, a couple of updates. Uh, we did finish our fiscal year, and that's up June 30th. Um, it was quite the interesting year with the stock market, the, the way that it went. Uh, in March, um, we were all the way down to a negative sex of 6.3% 6, 6, 6 return. Uh, we were able to rebound uh, by the end of the year to post a net return of 2.7%. Um, not our goal of hitting 7% every year, but we, we're never going to hit 7% every year. We want to average 7%. So we were able to um, maintain our current contribution rates. Um, probably one of the most uh, drastic declines in the stock market uh, that has happened in a long time. Uh, the recovery was almost as quick. Um, we're having a tremendous start to this year. Uh, so. As of this morning, um, our total fund balance is back up to about 19.6 million, um, and we're in a very good spot. Into the year, at about 87% funded ratio with a 20-year amortization period, um, which means that as long as we hit 7% on average over the long term, which we look 30 to 60 years out, um, if, as long as we hit that 7% average, we will uh, be 100% funded at some point years uh, that goes up, up and down all the time so uh, it, it is a moving target that we operate with so that's kind of a brief update of where we're at currently um, contribution rates have stayed the same I really um, am here to answer any questions that you may have or um, uh, provide additional information that the council may like that's Mr. Mayor I so so all right, sounds good. So tonight we are actually going to do some discussion <clears throat> as a council to decide if we're going to join the Percy uh, program on there. Um, I do have a question um, for you in looking at Percy. Uh, if are, are the employees, if we decide to join Percy, able to transfer their 457s into that 401k choice program? Per statute, any, uh, any active member of Percy has automatically an, uh, access to the choice plan, so absolutely that. Okay, that could happen on any, anybody that's an active member. Okay, cool. Thank you. Anybody have any questions of, of uh, Mr. Hampton? Uh, Mr. Hampton, uh, thanks for coming this evening. Um, uh, are you aware of uh, any other entities in this part of the state who are not members of Percy? Or are we are we the Lone Ranger out there at this point? And the reason I'm asking is because I, I know that the City of Star uh, has to compete with all of these other agencies to attract and retain talent. And, part of that is, is our benefits package. And so Councilman Keyes, um, you're pretty much alone uh, <laughs> in this area that we're aware of, we're of size. Um, there's always smaller uh, entities that come in that we just entered uh, two entities last month, um, two small rural fire, fire districts that were three and five employees. Um, but I would expect that City of Star is probably Employees, maybe even larger than that. Um, anybody of size, uh, of that size, there's not many left that aren't. We currently have 800 and uh, over 830 employers um, that are participating in Idaho as the sole governmental pension plan in the state. Okay, and then the other question I have is you know, from time to time, you read in the paper about uh, uh, different municipalities across the country who have uh, these ginormous unfunded pension obligations. Uh, can you uh, tell me briefly how, how Percy sits in the context of uh, a future risk for a, min a mun municipality such as STAR uh, going forward? Uh, Councilman, that is a great question because we hear this all the time. Um, Kentucky, as a matter of fact, leads the nation in, in uh, the number of articles that are written about an unfunded plan. Uh, the, the key piece that you have to understand when you have a pension is it's the time value of money. It's a very simple concept. When you put money in over a period of time, as long as you're consistently putting money in, you gain, um, you, you reap the rewards on that. That is the beauty of the IO plan and the IO legislative plan that they put together. You are mandated to pay. Um, time value of money then occurs. We've never had, uh, we've never had an institution 
not contribute because it's against the law to not contribute. We've never had the state, the, the legislature step in and say, and write IOUs. Uh, for example, Kentucky was 100% funded 25 years ago. They did not make another contribution to the plan for 25 years. That's why they're significantly underfunded. Almost every um, institute or every public pension plan that you run into that has a funding issue, almost invariably there was a point in time they stopped making the contributions. Idaho has that written in law. You can't you can't avoid your obligation in that, and it's something that has continued on and why we're as solid as we are. Um, to say that we're 87 percent funded after this last year is pretty tremendous when you really think about it. We were 92% funded going into last year and absorbed one of the worst stock market roller coasters in history. Um, our portfolio rebounded very nicely. It is continuing to operate exactly like we expected to. Um, it's got some downside protection plus some upside protection. We're never going to be the leader in, uh, in investment returns. That is not the plan. The plan is to protect and make uh, a reasonable return on our investments over a long period of time. So I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. Um, and then Mr. Mayor, I, I actually have a question for you. Um, you know, what is uh, the sense of city staff when you meet with them in staff meetings about uh, moving forward with this and, and what is your recommendation? Uh, about 95% I'll say the city staff would like to see us go on person. And I would recommend that we do go on Percy for some of the things that you talked about and, and being one of the only uh, entities here uh, in this valley, it makes recruiting a little bit more challenging, right? I, we actually had several people in this last hiring cycle uh, decline to be interviewed because we didn't have Percy, because they kept going over. So, so I, I do, so what is the vesting time for, and, there's two different vesting things, right? One for uh, for um, elected officials and one for the employees, Correct. right? Can you tell me what those are? Absolutely, elected officials are uh, vested immediately and that's because of their term um, is less than the standard vesting schedule, which is uh, five years. So to vest in the uh, pension, the base plan, you need to have five years of service Once you achieve that, then you're guaranteed a lifetime benefit based on our formula, which is basically uh, the easiest way to explain it is for every year of service you get, you get 2% of your final average pay uh, when you retire, and that's a lifetime benefit. What I can't, the other piece that, that employees need to understand is every dollar that is contributed on their behalf, or not on their behalf, by them. So the employee portion of the contribution is always theirs. So if they put a dollar in, they get that dollar back even if they leave within that five year vesting schedule. So uh, I just want to make sure that that's readily apparent to the employees as well. Okay. Do they get interest or uh, offer their money? or Guaranteed 1% return per year even if the fund loses money. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Hampton. David, do you have any questions? No. Jennifer? No, no, I don't. I uh, just uh, reflecting on the last one. Oh, maybe one. It, it is an all or nothing, correct? That is correct. Um, it is all employees or none employees. Okay. So if you're drawing a person from somewhere else, you can't join this, any entity with this person, correct? Uh, let me clarify your question. So Please do, because I probably asked it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about another pension plan, outside of the Public Employee Retirement System of Idaho, our PERSI, so an Oregon PERS, for example, you are able to come in, even if you're drawing another state's or another pension, you are still eligible to come into an eligible position. What you can't do is if you're currently receiving a benefit from PERSI Idaho, you can no longer be an active eligible employee, which means you can't be a full-time employee, or you have to suspend your benefit and accrue months and then if, when you re-retire then you can you will have additional months that will be added on to your service. I was just wondering if uh, someone's drawing it and they 
they decide to be foolish enough to run for a city council and get elected, would they have to stop? I'm not on Percy. <laughs> this is something I thought about. Uh, it depends, and, and I, I use that answer a lot um, because there are avenues for elected appointed officials to continue to receive their benefit and, and move into an elected appointed position. Um, primarily, one of the requirements is age. Um, so if you're age 62 or older and you get an elected appointed and you're currently receiving a benefit, you can continue to receive the benefit. But every single situation is different. Um, there is also the choice of the council and of the, um, of the council to, uh, the council is not in Percy. And that, that can be also another choice that can be made. So the all or nothing is really talking about the employees and the elected appointed is a little bit different and can actually be structured differently to where you have employees in and elected appointed out. Um, every one of those situations, I, I, I definitely think we need to talk about if you're interested in that because there can be different caveats that we can look at. Thank you. Any further questions? Jennifer? I know this is all new to you. Yeah, so. it is new. I did attend the, the meeting last year, though, when you presented, so I, I know a, a very little about it, um, but a little bit. And I appreciate uh, Mr. Key's, uh, your, your question to the mayor, because that was my um, question as well about if the staff wants this. So I, I wasn't aware, though, that um, council can So, so is when you say elected, is it all or nothing on the elected, or is, is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So, if there is, um, especially in rural, I know um, there will be uh, certain um, entities or the city council or um, a uh, irrigation district um, that has uh, certain elected or appointed positions. Uh, they will opt out but still have their employees in. And the, and the reason they do that is, um, one of the reasons that can happen sometimes is if you, if you have elected or appointed position, somebody's receiving the benefit and they don't meet their, their requirement, they have to suspend their benefit for their $50 a meeting um, kind of thing. So it kind of can limit the pool of opportunity that you've got there. Um, so it is kind of, a, it is an all or nothing as well. About council and mayor. I mean, I mean, is her is mayor, it, the mayor include that or is that different? Mayor's different. Okay. Um, it's typically the council seats. Uh, okay. And, and typically the mayor is deemed a full time position. Not in this city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's definitely discussions we can have. Um, and they're different opportunities. Okay. That you can have to start. Because that clears up, I think, quite a bit of question there too, as well. Because there was some some concern about that as well. So. Any more questions, Ms. Jennifer? Mr. Nielsen, Council Nielsen, you have any questions? Nothing? All right. Will you hang out, though? I you might hang out because we're going to talk about it and make a decision tonight. If they have questions, I would like to invite you back to answer them if that's possible. Okay. Pleasure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hampton. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. On to item 6A. Uh, motion by Council to approve the 2018-2019 audit report. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2018-2019 audit report. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do have any further discussion? Okay. Do you have a call? Sorry. Okay. Um, yes, so just a comment that I have. I found the audit report to be somewhat confusing. Um, it's So you will, you're going to, starting with this next budget year, you're going to probably see it on a monthly basis. Okay, fantastic. That's my goal to get it out to you on that. Great. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. 
Council of Peace. Oh, I saw you reaching for your button. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing none opposed, that motion carries. On to item 6B, Percy discussion and decision. Discussion? What kind of numbers have you got around on this? What do you mean? What, what number wise, when you're asking numbers, what, which numbers? What, what sort of contribution levels are we looking at? So we, so in our actual budget for this year, we budgeted for contribution levels with Percy included, which is, uh, what is it, 11% for the city? Is that what it is? I think 11.9 or something like that um, for uh, employees uh, pay on there. And so the, the actual number, I can't remember what it is on our budget, but it's included in our, in our 2020, 21 budget year. Now, what made it interesting to me is the fact that I know the summer concern on the council was, was the, 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 the benefit for the council on it, right? Where you, but, but hearing that we can actually separate that, maybe that's the option that you go with. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's up to you guys to decide if we decide to go that route. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Councilman uh, Hershey. Since uh, finding out that a, an elected body like the council is separate from the mayor, the council is a part-time position. It is not, in my mind, designed to be a position for life. Come into a few terms, lose your hair, and get out. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's happened to a few of us. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I'll go ahead, sorry. I personally do not think and this is just my personal opinion that Percy should be something that the uh, council should be concerned with uh, with uh, our positions but I'm definitely open to discussion for that I would totally agree with that So, so, so we, so here's the thing. I, I think it's important that, that this, the city gets into this Percy discussion for long-term benefit of the employees and for the future success of the city, uh, as far as uh, hiring quality and, and, and uh, high talent employees that have got experience around here, right? Um, I do know that we have a couple of employees that, that will not benefit from the person we'll have to discuss how how that works right um but at some point if we're going to get on percy sometimes you just have to to, to pull off the band-aid and just and just do it and, and move forward and we work out the details of, of those individuals that are going to be impacted so mayor chapman for those individuals that are impacted could we do a one-time payment into their current retirement system before we transfer transfer over to Percy that that would be the equal of I'll have to ask Chris is Jordan still on the phone oh that's right he, he, yeah. Um, yeah I think there's ways to do that uh, but I, I think that uh, we need to make sure we have the auditor the quality plan to make sure that those funds are managed more appropriately uh, but I, I do think to move that, that we um, keep the city council the status quo and that we provide for the mayor and the, and the rest of the city employees uh, Percy uh, for our retirement uh, solution um, and direct staff to work out the details of uh, with our the accountants and auditors um, addressing any um, disparity that we may be causing for the staff members who are Okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? second. I'll second that. We have a motion and double second <laughs> on that. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes. Just, just for the record, I did pull up the uh, the budget and uh, the difference between the retirement program that we've had and Percy for this year would be uh, uh, $14,064.55 per the, the, the um, salaries that we had budgeted this year. Correct. 
Okay. And I can I uh, on, on discussion would you amend your motion to have it effective January one? So it gives us three months to put stuff together and, and a target date for that. So amended. And uh, I also would request that you um, amend your motion to give the mayor uh, discretion in um, what it means to uh, uh, to make those employees whole who may be negatively impacted by this. Uh, I believe that was the intent of my motion, so okay. I don't have a problem. With Okay, so we got the amended motion. We have an amended second. If, if my second is the one that counted, I'll amend my okay. second. Okay, so. <laughs> we'll go for that. So we got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Just one question, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Hershey? Uh, obviously, Percy's been talked about with all employees so far, uh -huh. and you have some sort of plan in mind, I assume. I do. Okay. So I am supportive of it, but uh, I've also been very vocal on that you have a good plan in place. Right, no we do, I got an idea that we'll work through that. So, okay, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. So we will be getting with you eventually here <laughs> on that. Okay, uh, item, to, item 6C, amended intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreement with the Star Fire District. Um, Chris, do you want to talk to this or do you want me to say what Dave Ray was asking? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, uh, you saw a previous version of this uh, several months ago. Uh, when the city first adopted impact fees uh, for the Star um, Fire District. Uh, this is an update that, uh, that there aren't a lot of changes. One of the main changes is that it's, 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 it's an administrative fee uh, that the city will collect with each impact fee it collects. It's, I can't remember if it's 15 or $20, uh, but um, it's a small percentage of the, of the fees that are collected, but it allows the city to be reimbursed for the um, administrative costs uh, to the city to collect the fees and do the process it since the district uh, doesn't have the legal authority to do that. Um, but otherwise, it's it's very similar to the agreement that you previously approved. We're just updating it and amending it to um, it just kind of fit how things are currently operating. Any, any questions of Chris on this amended agreement? Mr. Mayor? Councilman Keyes. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the amended intergovernmental agreement with Star Fire District. Uh, do I need to read the title? Or is that good enough for council? Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second? I will second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, being the fire liaison, I can say that these guys are diligent and good people. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call. We just gave you a preview. Yeah, we'll give you a preview. I think you're a surprise. Councilman Hershey? Aye. Councilman Keyes? Aye. Councilwoman Salmonson? Aye. Councilman Nielsen? Aye. Uh, hearing all ayes, that motion is approved. Thank you. On to item 6D, the South of River sub area bid and contract approval. This is a pretty exciting time for us um, to get this uh, South of the, air, uh, of the River area um, planned out. It's a blank slate, it's a clean canvas, and, and we're gonna get uh, a lot of great input, I think, from our citizens, and I'll have Sean talk to it here. And you may wanna grab your microphone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Council. Um, uh, staff, he and uh, myself and Brian, along with uh, Mayor Chadwick and Council President Hershey, got together and reviewed the three uh, proposals that we received for the uh, South River Sub-Area Plan. We did that last week. We um, compared the uh, three proposals, uh, compared cost, uh, services to be provided, uh, extra, extra services that, that could be needed. You're okay. I need to keep going. Ex extra services that that uh, might be needed, um, and the 
before it was made a recommendation to council um, and put an order, an order of one, two, three for those three companies. The three companies were uh, Kimberly Horn, uh, Logan Simpson, and Makers Design. Staff is recommending to the council that they accept the proposal for Makers Design, Architecture, Planning, and Urban Design as the uh, preferred consultant team for the RFP for the South River Subarea Plan. I'll stand for questions. Questions of staff? Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nielsen. I just wanted, do you have a, a spreadsheet that could be easily brought up that shows a side-by-side -side comparison? We're, oh, so we're trying to get our, our system. Can you see it? Oh. Also, also we see right now is the video. I can't. I can't access any of my computer. We can give you the three uh, back pages that have the uh, proposal. Right, they're, yeah, yeah. they're the individuals. I was just hoping for maybe a more comparative view. Why is it yelling? He must have hit something. Could you go into, you know, in absence of that, go into the de some detail on why you are recommending this one? Is it just cost or what? No. So we looked at um, uh, several components when making our decision. We looked at uh, Idaho uh, project experience. We looked at uh, obviously we looked at the, the uh, budget range, but that wasn't our that wasn't our uh, deciding factor. The, the, the proposal that we are recommending actually came in came in within budget, but it was it was the middle the middle proposed. Uh, Also looked at the, t the teams and, and as a whole with what, what the what the team was bringing in um, service wise and we did we, and we did look at um, Idaho and Treasure Valley experience as well as one of our components yeah. do we have any examples of work that they done in the past that we that were reviewed uh, yes we do Design team had so I, I Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Um, I did notice in the RFP that it states um, that. How, how, excuse me, how uh, the selection criteria, it says um, like cost would be 30%, um, let's see, reference from other clients, attesting to firms, 25%, and then it has, you know, a number of, of items for the, the criteria percentages. Did you do something like that when you rated these? Yes, we did. Okay. So that, that experience, Question for Councilmember Nielsen. Uh, Makers Design, uh, they've, they've, they've worked on the Julia Davis Mixed Cheese Development Plan, St. Luke's Medical Center Master Plan, Mount Home Community Planning, Shadow Valley Plan Community, Karcher Farmway uh, Rezone, uh, Council Downtown Revitalization, uh, Three Rivers Transportation Study. South Point Byway, Napa Downtown Streetscape. So those were the. Mm -hmm. That was answering Councilman Nielsen's question. Yes. Okay. Any further questions on that? Do you have a scoring sheet anywhere available so we can see?
Where's my where's my IT specialist? We can't get this to. Um, we lost our we lost our. She can't see where you left it right now. Yep. It's so, Mr. Mayor. I, I think there must be a connection when Actually, you guys when you guys are, are walking around it's cutting off and moving on. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a cable down there. Because after the audit presentation, that's when it switched. Hey, we're going to take a five minute recess while we work on this. Okay. Councilman Nelson, yeah. Continue. Just before you do, we just on the record just make sure it's clear that we restarted the meeting at the time. Okay. We are going to restart the meeting at 7.54 p.m. at Star City Hall. Council Nelson, you have a, a question? So I, I guess just continue questions. Um, some of the, and, and what they're stemming from, let me preface my questions by saying my intent here is not to be critical. Um, but I, I'm, I'm looking at what's in the packet for, for the recommended and they've included some pictures of things that they've done. And I'm looking at it and thinking, that this is not, this is not wow. This is not, you know, quality that I would have expected for somebody coming to say, give me your business. You know, they highlighted this, this waterfront uh, property and then showed a couple of examples. And, you know, one, one is some apartments with, with unkempt grass growing over a path. Another one is a is a boat launch with nothing but lawn going up to it and a sidewalk going across. I mean, there's there's nothing here that demonstrates that they can actually plan a community. Uh, you know, the, the drawing, of course, of the St. Louis complex. Um, you know, obviously they can place some buildings on, on a drawing, but I, I guess it, in my mind I was expecting uh, you know a pitch more like we saw in our workshop a couple of weeks ago. Of this is what we can come in and wow, look what we can help you do in your community. So I, I guess my question really is, what did you guys see that I'm not seeing here in this packet that, that made you say, yep, those are our, that's our team? Um, well, I guess to answer your question, I guess we didn't really give a whole lot of uh, credit to the pictures and look more at the, at the uh, qualifications You don't want me to go that direction? That's probably not.
is all this is all pulled from their their uh, from the three proposals and, and then uh, compare it. It was broken down into the RFP tasks, which you can see. Um, so it, it actually says that they did not break it out. Only yeah, we had we had to go. Floodplain and the traffic. Correct. And that will be determined after we get further down, to further through the process, uh, and start working with ACHD and ITD. <laughs> Councilwoman Jennifer. <laughs> So let me, let me ask you a question, Chris. If they select the top two that they want to see, can we have them come into a workshop and do a presentation to us with their about their bid? Yeah. And and then we can come back to a public hearing and do um, have the council select based off of that. I mean, I know I, I so so here's the thing. I, I know we had this pretty aggressive schedule time time wise, but I think it's better to get it right than it is to to push it, I guess, to get it done in February. If we have to push it out to March to be done, then it's March, I guess, right? Yeah, Mayor, I guess one question on that. Um, was This is done as a, um, 
the request for qualifications where the the um, decision is not based solely on price, correct? It's based correct. on qualifications. Correct. And so the city should have a scoring mechanism that it uses to determine whether or not all of its needs are met, uh, which can be, uh, you know, there's no magic mechanism or web table how that looks, it's something the city can create on its own. Um, if that has not been done, that can be done, and then that can be used by the council to score um, as you invite entities in to, to provide a presentation to the city. Um, but there, the city should have some um, specific guidelines that it's using so that it doesn't appear that it's just kind of a, you know. I like your pictures better. Right. Yeah, or, or anything else, right? You know, you happen to be my next door neighbor, so I'm picking you, or um, whatever it is, that it, it creates so that it's um, a fair process for people that are looking from the outside. And so I would just, um, again, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with having them come in and, and have a presentation with a larger group than, um, than just the initial uh, bids are put forward. Um, you, you may want all three to come just so that it's a fair process and one doesn't say, hey, wait a second, we didn't know that there would be this third option. Had we known that, we might have submitted something differently so we could get our foot in the door and actually have a conversation with council. Because um, I, I don't remember exactly what the RFQ looked like, so that it, whoever the third person, the third group is, it may feel like the process is now changing midstream. Uh, but with that caveat, having a man with, with a workshop and doing presentations so, so that full council can hear what they all have to say and make a decision based on that uh, is appropriate. So so I just, you know, when I'm thinking about this a little bit, to make sure it's fair, do we have a right to not invite, we just have one group in at one time, make them leave, have somebody else come in so they're not piggybacking off of each other in it, that workshop? Right, right, yeah, you don't, they don't need to, uh, otherwise the third person, the third group or second group, whatever, it gets to right. probably have some advantage that way, so I think it's, uh, certainly appropriate to just have them in one at a time without having you know some of the any of the other groups being able to watch the presentation then uh, modify it differently based on questions that are asked or uh, how the presentation looks or what the focus is or anything like that they all come in with their own uh, okay. own work and the council can make their decision based on that so so the so from what i what i'm thinking so we can get the score sheet together set up a, a, a workshop do we want to limit limit the time for the presentation? Yeah, thirty minutes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I can talk a lot about this. I mean, Go ahead. Yeah, lot. it's called verbal proposals, and it's done in the uh, Department of Defense an awful lot. And I can tell you this: if you're an expert in the field, they're really good. If you're not an expert in the field, it's a flash. It's it's all who gives the better pictures in a verbal, public, speaking environment. If uh, I, I do not feel a layman such as myself will gain much, if anything, from them. If you can't get it from the written proposal, you're probably not gonna get it from the verbal unless you absolutely understand the field that you're talking about. I've seen this before and also in the federal government, if your uh, evaluation criteria does not state, then you do not do. I don't know if that holds true on a city level or a state level, but I know that in the uh, federal level, if we were to engage in this, and especially only invite two, we would be under what's called a protest, and we would lose. I don't Chris, know. So, Chris, your thoughts on that? I, I, obviously, somebody has to file the protest, but I do agree with Councilman Hershey that if you only invite two, you do open the door for the third to say, hey, wait a second, how come? We aren't a part of this. Uh, you didn't have that in your documents, and you were going to invite everybody, and now, um, you know, now, now the process is unfair, and we're being, you know, unfairly eliminated. So I, I think, if, to the extent you're going down this path, I think you should invite all three, so they all have an equal chance. I would actually amend the solicitation or uh, RFP and have them return a signed copy saying that an oral presentation is. and have a set of strict questions you're gonna ask. You can have follow-ons on those questions, but all the same questions must be asked or same areas of criteria that you want them to discuss must be, it's almost like a job interview. 
you have your standard questions and then you can lean on from there, but you have to ask your standard questions. Thoughts from council? Just gave mine. <laughs> I got you, I got yours. So, Mr. Mayor. Council McGee's. So I have a question for Council Hershey. So, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you think that having a workshop would be um, of limited value and that you think that we probably have everything we need in front of us to make a decision? It's possible. I mean, I, I read these. I was not part of the second meeting. I had been called in uh, for other meetings that I was obligated to. Uh, so I wasn't part of the delineation that they've given us here, uh, but I was part of the initial. What I'm saying is, just plain and simple, we all have our expertise. If you're not an expert in the field, it's like going and buying a car because it's shiny, you know, and that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna show you the polish on the outside, but if you don't know how to dig in and ask the right questions, it's uh, it's a point where you're, you're almost going off of a personality versus the actual established criteria of what you're looking for. And I'm just saying, it's it's not dangerous, but it's, it's it can have uh, factors of, uh, you know, where people are, are good enough to steer you away from the concerns and steer you to what they call the positives. It's, uh, you know, they can lead the conversation to show you only the shiny bright side and never turn it over and show you if there's any rust. It's just that you need an expert in there that understands what questions to ask. Uh, you give them a list of the questions you're gonna ask and uh, you go from there. So I'm just saying myself, just being very honest, I probably wouldn't get much more out of it. I'd be happy to sit and listen. I do enjoy them. But uh, in reality, my goal or my job is to take a summary that the technical experts give you and go from that. And that's that's how I, I do it, to keep myself out of the weeds, but make sure there's a sound business decision being made and the why. So in the, uh, in the RFP, we did publish a selection criteria. Yes. And uh, uh, it was, approved by the council, um, and do you believe as part of the selection committee that that, that criteria was followed leading up to the recommendation? I believe it was, but also if you want to go into orals, you simply tell them. If it just, it, it, you're not in a point where you have a contract. You don't have a contract right now, you have a solicitation. I'm gonna use that term loosely, I know it's an RFP. But it, it's a solicitation of type, which means the playing field that we're establishing is still in our hands. All you have to do in a solicitation is make sure it's fair. You can do almost anything you want, but it has to be applied fairly to those, especially after a bid is closed. So you just simply send an amendment saying, we're asking for oral presentations, we're asking these questions, do you agree to this, yes or no? If they don't agree to it, well, that's fine. They, they made a conscious choice, but you offer it to all, all three. And that's uh, that's how I would do it. Mayor Chadwick. Councilman Nelson. I, I think what I'm looking for, is, and I like this idea, is really to just have some, you know, some examples. Have them come in and, and present examples of work that they've done. If I'm to, to go off of what they've submitted here in these proposals, and you know, not being an expert in sub area planning, uh, I'm going to look at it a whole lot differently than an expert would. So I'm going to look at things much like I do when I when I get a resume for a job, and I'm going to look for misspelled words. I'm going to look for you know, organization and other traits and characteristics that might lead uh, me to believe one way or another about the kind of work that I might receive. And what I'm seeing in our recommended uh, proposal here tonight uh, are a lot of red flags in that regard. And I would probably lean more toward um, the uh, Logan Simpson application or proposal, I mean, uh, than I would on the makers based on those facts. And so, for me, I'm looking for, for more, a more concrete uh, method of determination and, and being able to arrive at a, a decision that we can all agree on. And I guess in my mind, one of the best ways to do that is, hey, show us what you've actually done. Yeah, I agree to that. Like a bucket of Legos and say, build something. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my goodness. The, uh, so, so, we can put the score to get the scoring criteria sheets together for the council based off of that, and then uh, we can send out that amended thing that you were talking about to all 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 of them to come to a workshop. And I guess we got to look at timing. I mean, when do you want to do this? There's a lot of workshops going on between now and the end of the month. Well, I think we're going to be pushed out till mid this 
out till October, uh, like mid to late October. To yeah. to uh, for us to approve it, to get a workshop, well, to get a workshop, get a workshop. Get a workshop. We're, we're but we, I, I guess, again, to do this right and make sure it's right, it's okay for us to modify and adjust our schedule um, when we expect it to have this completed. Yes. I mean, that's not an issue. Yeah, we, have, we have to do that, yeah. which I think would be fine. You can so, explain that modification, too, in your letter requesting the, the uh, oral presentation. And okay. you can explain that that's part of the modification as an extension of the uh, completion date. Okay. Michael, yeah, Mr. Mayor. So, I, I'm feeling some urgency here, um, and, and uh, I, I know that we had set the, the completion date on this partially around when Star Sewer and Water was going to go live with their lift station, um, because uh, I'm getting a sense that there's going to be an awful lot of interest in development in this South of River area. Um, I know I I've been involved in working on this thing since I'm looking at a document here that I drafted uh, on May 10th and that was September 15th and, and, and here we are and, and I'm feeling like we've already lost a great deal of time and I'm um, okay with pushing this out a little bit but to say we're going to push this out to October and later to even get started is is, uh, um, is, is frankly bothering my sense of urgency. I, I think we need to get rolling on this because if we don't we're going to be in trouble. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll establish it. We'll, we'll have to look at the dates. I mean, not everybody's going to be available at all times. I understand that. Right? And so we got we, we to gotta work through that, that concept and that process. And I get the urgency. I understand it completely. But I also want to make sure that this is right and that we do it right and we get the right, the right plan for the city. So it's not something like Councilwoman Jennifer said, it sits on the shelf and collects dust. No, I, I, right? Well, I, I mean, the intent is, is to uh, amend this uh, or, or adopt this as an amendment into our comprehensive plan. It's hardly sitting on a shelf. No, I get that, but we gotta get it right. So let me ask this question. With the, <clears throat> we'll just start with makers. Do you feel that you could sit down with them and convey your vision? Because that's what we're doing. Because these these are not concrete plans of exactly what they're gonna do. No, these, these are, are conceptual. Therefore, there's gonna be a lot of input from us. Do you feel they could carry your vision? But what I hear you saying is, is, is there a team fit, right? And, and if these, oh, point. And, and we want to make sure that we've got the right organization that's going to come in here that carries a vision and a planning approach with them that's going to, to yield a, a result that we're looking for. And looking at these proposals, I see what I'm looking for in the Logan Simpson proposal. I don't see anything close to what I'm looking for in the Baker's proposal. Let me ask this though, what those pictures they showed you, was that their vision or were they conveying the vision of those that hired them? That's something we should ask them. So let me, okay. I mean, if, if they're putting that forward as their, their example, and this is what we do, you'd think that they pick one that actually looks good. <laughs> so so let, me, let me ask this question, Sean. October 1, that Thursday night, can we do a workshop that night? Because we don't have anything scheduled that night. And then have the schedule for approval on October 6th for our next council meeting. I think the contract has to be approved. Well, the meeting that you invite everybody into, that could just be a special meeting of the council. And so if you wanted to do all of it that night, have all the presentations, then make a decision that night, you could do that. I think that's a great idea, and I, no, I feel the urgency too. I want to, I want to get going on this, but man, I, I don't want to get going with an outfit that's gonna, you know, give us something that sits on the shelf. Jennifer and I have already helped produce a plan in this city that is sitting on the shelf. I'm not about to do it again. So, are you good with October one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can schedule a meeting for October one. So do we need to make a motion on table this, Chris, or is this not a, it's not a table item, right? No, it, it's not a public hearing, so it, it's not something you necessarily okay. need to table for notice purposes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you certainly, as the mayor, have the authority to 
set a date for when it'll be uh, reheard, whether it's a special meeting or regular meeting, but it doesn't have to necessarily be done by motion. Okay, so we'll, we'll, so in the essence of time now, I guess, we'll schedule a meeting, a special meeting, Sean, on October 1. Um, yep. A workshop and then a special a workshop meeting. And a, well, yeah, a workshop and a special meeting on October 1 um, to have the, all three, and we'll get them a letter sent out this week. I would give them a phone call tomorrow and tell them it's coming. Is there any time we're giving 15 days? Yeah, that's plenty. Mayor Chow, I've got one last question on this. Sure. Was there anything in any of these proposals that you guys saw that would made you say definitely not them? I, I, me, did you, what, can you guys answer that? Well, there were some perceived conflicts of interest that we, we had recognized in the same as Aside from that, no other qualifications or concerns about professional credentials, things like that. No, no, no. no they were all, all yeah, they're all very good, very good company. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set up a meeting for October one, and then have you guys call them okay. and send them a letter, both inviting them to that meeting, I guess, on October one, with what Councilman Hershey said. Uh, about what would you say? How do you word that? Verbal proposals. Verbal proposals. Yeah, proposals. It's in the article. Oh, okay. All right. So October one. You got it. Okay. Can we? Are we good with that? All right. All right. We'll move on to item six uh, E, the public hearing for the Natera subdivision annexation and zoning. Um, that one was tabled from August 18th. We're gonna to have to table it again because we're still waiting for some ACHD, ACHD reports on that with the, the changes that are, are being made on that project. So I think, what day would you wanna table it? Is it the 6th? Yeah. October 6th meeting? We'll, we'll have it by then. So we need to make a motion to table that to October 6th, 2020. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes. I'd like to make a motion that we table the Mortera subdivision annexation and zoning DA, Culinary, Platt, and Private Street to October 6th. Okay, we got a motion, we have a second? Second, Dad. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries. <laughs> Item 6F, <clears throat> the public hearing on the canvas back subdivision annexation. That one's gonna be tabled also till October 6th, 2020. Do we need a motion for that one? I think we have to, we have to, we have to date service, we have to, uh, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes. I make a motion that we uh, table the uh, public hearing for the can canvas back subdivision annexation and zoning preliminary plat to October 6, 2020. Okay, we, we got a motion, we have a second? Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries. Finally, on item 6G. Chris, you're up. Public hearing on the Amazon Falls subdivision DA modification. Um, we're going to ask the council if they have any ex parte contact in this. No, Mr. Mayor. Hearing? None. No. Hearing none, we are going to open this up to, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to open this up to applicants. Go ahead, Chris, you can come up here and, and, and discuss. Mayor, Council, Chris Todd, 50, our business address, 53 North Plummer Road, Star, Idaho, 83669. Uh, here on behalf of AF Investments for Amazon Falls and the DA modification um, that we're doing in order to uh, bring in the impact fees for ITD into the city. Um, that's all I'm really here other than what was on the staff report from Sean. I was hoping to actually have some public uh, input in the beginning of the agenda, but I didn't see that that was on the agenda. It's not on the agenda today. It's not on the agenda no. today. Um, I did bring with me a guest tonight. Uh, this is Maxine uh, Schwanfeld. Um, I have inputted a letter from her um, into the city for your comprehensive plan workshops. 
We weren't able to attend the first one, we apologize. Uh, Maxine lives at 4505 uh, North Highway 16. She's lived there for 35 years. Is it related to this? No. Hearing? So we can't talk about that right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, at least it's an introduction for the letter okay. that was submitted. All right. So the, the uh, public hearing is simply to open the DA and modify it for the ITD proportion to share That's correct. agreement. Any questions of the applicant? Okay, go ahead. And you can sit, no, there's no one that signed up to speak. Did you want to talk anymore, Chris? Yes, I would. But related to no. this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A for effort. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so we're going to close the public hearing. Uh, go to council deliberations. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes. Uh, I make the motion that we approve the uh, modification to the development agreement, uh, DA 20 14, um, putting in a provision for uh, uh, the proportionate share agreement with ITD. Okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. On to item 6H, the public hearing for the Gary Saunders annexation and zoning. zoning. Uh, again, we're going to ask the council, do they, does anybody have any ex parte communication? None. Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Oh, no. Okay. Hearing none, um, do we have the applicant here? Can you come up here, say your name, and... Uh, Gary Saunders, uh, 3245 North Wing Road, star. Okay. Do you want to tell us about your project? Uh, at this point, I'm just asking to be annexed into the city with an R2. Is there anybody signed up on the sheet over there? Okay, any questions of the applicant? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Keyes. Uh, Mr. Saunders, we, uh, as is um, not unusual, haven't received the uh, report from uh, ACHD on this yet. Uh, are you willing to um, uh, to accept whatever recommendations they make and, and uh, as a addition to the, to the uh, development agreement? So will we even get a report from ACHD on this anyway? Because there's no preliminary plan to it. Yeah. The, 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 the plan for Mr. Saunders is to come back with a preliminary plan in the future. He did provide a uh, concept plan yeah. in, his, in his packet. So at that time, ACHD would get specific. There are two stud streets to the south that he would need to look into in the Greendale subdivision. Right. Well, I know it's not unusual to get an ACHD report though for a rezone. And a, uh, I think I think it was a preliminary plan. But yeah, Okay. How about uh, ITD agreement would be in that development agreement as well, correct? Yeah, the portion share will be part of the development agreement. Okay. Any, any further questions of the applicant? Councilman Nelson? None. None? Councilman Hershey? Uh, I'm good, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, so we're going to close that public hearing and move on to council deliberations. <clears throat> no one signed up to speak. Mayor Shadwick. Councilman, Councilman Nielsen. I move that we approve uh, Gary Saunders' annexation and zoning application. I second that. We got a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? But with uh, Mr. Keyes' recommendation to follow the ACHD requirements. And, and to include the proportional share agreement in the development agreement. So the Mayor Chadwick, the proportional share agreement language is already in the, the, uh, right. the application. And I guess in my opinion, it goes without saying that he would have to accept whatever recommendations ACHD provides. So motion stands. Second stands too. Okay, we got a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Welcome, Welcome to the start. city. Okay, we're going to um, move.
move on to item seven reports. Chief, been waiting patiently back there. <laughs> Star Chief of Police. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about. First of all, the uh, radar trailer was delivered yesterday, and so we unpacked it. And right now, it's sitting over at uh, Hunter Street Park within the, the combined, you know, fence over there um, until we can get it registered and get it legal for the road. We hope to have that done in the next week or so. So hopefully, sometime next week, we should see that out out and about. So I did want to talk. What I had uh, the council and mayor is um, some information on the reports that this device can give us. And um, as you look through the first couple pages, that deal with putting the, the equipment on my computer. But the last two pages, um, I do just want to address. Uh, you know, we do have the the speed compliance reports. It'll it'll give us the information of speeds, dates, times, uh, traffic count, and again, it's also two directional, so even though it flashes and shows the speed that a violator may be going in one direction, it's still data collecting in both directions. And so we'll be able to get that. Uh, it also uh, has a program that once it has all that data, it can give us uh, a best uh, time and date to try and work the area for speed violators, help kind of uh, be more efficient with our time. Um, I do have one question, so how I envision this is you know neighbors uh, come to us complaining about speed in a certain area. Uh, we often have uh, either neighborhood watch or homeowner associations. I mean, the residents come to me and, and speak. So we, how I envision this is we go out, we do the study. You know whether it's a couple days or a week, get the data. I would like to provide the information to the citizens. But question I have for council is because the city is collecting data, do we have to go through public information request? Is it something that I can just give them? Uh, you, you don't have to go through a public records request. Um, I, I think you want to make it clear um, that that's how the process is going to work. And so in some ways, when they first approach you and say, we, you know, we're looking for a study or that kind of data, that we might consider that the request anyway, and then the city is going to go collect it and bring it back. Um, normally, when somebody requests information that we don't have, my idea of what response is that doesn't exist. <laughs> But in this case, uh, where it's a service that the city is choosing to provide, I, I think that process works okay. Okay, and it, it doesn't collect any private information, it doesn't collect license plates, that information, um, it's, it's just literally date, time, and speed, and direction of travel. Um, so uh, yeah, how I envision it is once we get that stuff, I'll meet up with the, the groups again, um, and provide the data, and kind of give them what our plan is to help work the solution you know, in the future. So uh, hopefully the next week, we should see that out and about and uh, help out with our, our speed issues. Are there any questions, Dan, or with Mayor or Council for the, the radar trailer? Mayor Chadwick. Council Nielsen. Thank you, Chief. I'm really excited that we've got this uh, coming up. So, um, on the data collection, do you know how, how long the system will collect the data, or do you have a, any idea in mind um, where you will store the data and what sort of retention period? So, uh, it's my understanding. Let me backtrack, uh, Councilman. Uh, I do have a representative from the, the company coming out next week, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, and he's gonna sit down with me and give me a training on all that stuff, so I should have better answers than how I understand it. Um, as soon as you you know turn it on and set your parameters and the control, it collects all, so whether or not you need one report or another, it has all the information that you could need. So then when you go through the app here, um, it's downloaded on a thumb drive, go, you download it from the, the radar trailer, put it on my computer upstairs, I've already put the application on my computer, it'll dump the information, and then based on what the citizens are needing or what we need, um, I can tailor the report, maybe I might need one report, but I don't need the other, or vice versa. Um, that data would then remain on my computer. So, Mayor, Mayor Chadwick, I, I might recommend that we draft a, a policy around this data, just because your computer might die. Mm -hmm. um, we may have the data at one point and be able to provide a report and then no longer be able to provide that report. Mm -hmm. right? Just so that we 
And, and I'd be happy to you know, help with something like that. But, uh, if we are going to make it available, then we should probably be clear about that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Councilman Neal, uh, uh, keys? Uh, uh, do, uh, uh, do you have access to uh, uh, any part of the city share drive for, for the work you do for, on behalf of the city? I don't believe so. Can we get us know? Thinking maybe that's something we can provide with the data there in the cloud, and then that I don't know if we can though. With right. your is your equipment with the sheriff's office under a separate secure thing? It is. Ours? It is, but I could envision, and I, I apologize, I'm not an IT person, so I default to, to, to the professional. Um, it could be something as simple as I put the information from the thumb drive on a city computer yeah. for that purpose, and then I also then put it on my computer yeah. for my purpose. That went about that way. Yeah. If that would work. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I just think there's a, there might be a conflict with our systems interconnecting because of the security of your system. So, Mayor Chadwick, I, I might recommend that we have our, our city IT, our contracted IT professional, um, meet with, with the sheriff and the, the personnel from Easy Analysts when they come out, uh, just for the purpose of understanding what we can do as far as retention of data. Where to store it. It may be in a proprietary format and it may not be any good to store it somewhere else. Um, You're the IT expert, so I. Well, you know. have an IT expert on oh, staff. No, no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this whole thing is our IT guy. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Um, and, and I'm not in any way trying to uh, uh, talk Councilman Nielsen out of this idea of uh, uh, the data retention policy. I, frankly, I think it's a great idea to amend any policy you might already have. Chief, so you talked about sharing data. Are you talking about uh, specifically with neighborhoods who request the use of this machine, or are you talking about uh, just pu publicly sharing this when it's just kind of out and about on normal collectors and arterials and highways within the city, maybe in the newsletter or something like that? Or what, what, what's your vision for sharing data? How I how I do see it uh, originally is uh, sharing that data with the the requesters of the the help. Um, I certainly could, you know, spread it beyond that. Um, but uh, how I see it right now is neighborhood A says there's speeders. We put the information out there. We let it run for a period of time, and then I share that data with them. Okay. That's how I. That's how I see it. But I could. Uh, we could. I think that's one good function of it is because of the data collection, not just the the speed, but the traffic count. It can also get us that the, the traffic count if we have desires for. Some of our arterials, we can certainly do that also. Okay, and uh, uh, just as, a, as an aside, I, I find just a little bit of irony in the uh, fact that the manufacturer of the company makes the software is called Stalker. <laughs> okay, cool. That's Any, anything I, else, Dennis? Uh, and then just to follow up with the, the council mayor, uh, we've had two applicants for a new detective position. Uh, one of them is a current star deputy. Uh, the other one is a current detective in the CUNA contract. And so next week, uh, towards the end of the week, we'll be uh, sitting down with them and doing the, the interviews. And we should have an answer by next week of who that detective will be. Do you know when they have a start date of October 1 now? Uh, I, I, as close to October 1 as, as close as we can. can. Yeah. Uh, the reason being, we have a, a, a two week pay cycle, and um, our human resources can't transfer someone in the middle of the pay cycle. So we have to catch it either before, and it's always on a Sunday, every every other Sunday. So we just gotta catch it on, on a pay cycle. Perfect, thank you. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, sir, Chief. John, Ryan, anything? Chris, we'll start with Kevin. I'll pass to Jennifer. Okay. Jennifer, Councilwoman Sullivan, sorry. Um, thank you. Uh, so the Pathways and Beautification Committee um, Chairman, he, as far he was here tonight, hoping to report as well. But I've noticed in last month, did we also not have committee reports? No, we did report. We did. Okay. Maybe he was out. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. So he gave me a, a few items here to that he wanted to highlight. Um. The first being uh, the quarterly service award. Um, the, the second quarter um, recipient has been selected, and so that announcement will be soon. Um, nominees, or it's open for nominees, or you can make a nomination um, for the quarter three and 
forms will be coming up. So there is a form on the website if you would like to nominate someone, um, outstanding citizen, volunteer, um, or business uh, that goes above and beyond in our community. Um, the committee is also working on a design element plan, which I think will uh, connect in with this uh, sub area plan as well. Um, as we move forward with that, I think that we want to be sure that we commit that we include the um, pathways committee with that project. Um, Eagle Scout project it has been funded. He uh, um, is cleaning up the river. Uh, there's some barb barbed wire that he's taking down, and um, he's going to be the Eagle Scout. Make Star Shine will be on November 7th. So if there is seniors or people with disabilities that need to have their, um, would like assistance having their yard raked, um, we, that's the day. Um, you can find the application on the website as well and volunteer, wow, the committee. We're looking for volunteers. I think last year there was 20 some volunteers that went out in the community and raked, it, raked a number of homes. Great, great thing. Uh, so go to the website if you need assistance cleaning up your yard or if you want to volunteer. Um, they are working on a bird habitat project at the Riverwalk and may need some funding, so he'll get together with you. Matt will. It's not much. Hundred dollars. Maybe we'll find a donation. Um, and that, let's see, additional, oh, um, also, they are, um, they would like to have some more, uh, dog cleanup areas down at the river. We've been yeah. down there, and. You're talking the dog station? Yes. We got two station. more to put up. Okay, so you have them, they just need to be put in, okay? And I am really pushing that we start working on a um, bike head plan, pedestrian plan, so he will get on that. So that's that's what you were talking about, meeting with them about an overall yeah. thing, so Sean wants to meet with the committee. That would be great to, do you want to be on a come to a committee meeting? Mm -hmm. Can you invite you? When's that um, October 7th. We'll schedule a workshop that night. <laughs> yeah, next committee meeting is October 7th at 6.15. And that's all my committee meetings. Okay. Councilman Keyes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, Transportation Committee has been uh, engaged on the uh, Canyon Highway District for uh, impact fee uh, study. Um, we had a Committee did, was part of a presentation today with uh, to Canyon County uh, presenting our, our progress to date. And uh, um, right now, I'm anticipating that sometime around January 1st timeframe, uh, we'll uh, be ready to adopt that impact fee uh, structure uh, within uh, Canyon Highway 4 and, and including City of Star. If the council and the mayor are interested, um, Chris Hopper from Canyon Highway District Number 4 uh, would be. Um, available to come and do a presentation of the council uh, of uh, our project to date and stand for questions you may have about uh, progress and, and about what's coming. Um, I'll, uh, if you guys want me to arrange that, please let me know and I will. Then uh, also, uh, I had a, um, a tour yesterday hosted by uh, Mayor Chadwick, uh, attended by Councilman Nielsen of the progress at 960 Main. And uh, wow, they're going fast and that's that's going to be an awesome facility for the city. So uh, thanks for, for all your effort on that, Mr. Mayor. And that's all I've got for now. Thank you. So let's, um, are you guys interested to hear about the impact fee stuff? Do my presentation on that? What's our October 6th meeting look like? Because we didn't put this other one on there, so we should have a free spot. Mm -hmm. Is it a busy one? Yeah. So what do you, sure, sure. Uh, can we do the second meeting in October? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, Councilman Hershey. Uh, the only committee that's meeting is money to report next week or next meeting uh, for a presentation, so I won't steal that thunder. So for now, until this COVID thing relaxes on some of my committees, that's my report. <laughs> All right. Um, um, just a couple things here. I do have a, a, a meeting with uh, Mayor Rule and Middleton to continue our discussions with uh, the impact area between us. Um, I'm also probably gonna, after Councilman Neal, or uh, Keyes had a meeting with um, oh, the Cannon County Planner, probably include her in that meeting too. Yeah, yep. Um, the biggest thing, I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of this, we just gotta be fire wise right now we have a lot of dry grass in our foothills and a lot of properties and people that live up there and fires are starting left and right in our communities right now uh, in our state and i just want to make sure that we all get the message out there to be wise you know we all like to shoot we all like to, to go out and, and recreate and stuff but but a lot of times we can we can create our own demise um, by doing those things when it's really dry um, so do whatever we can to protect our, our, our uh, citizens and their properties uh, and our communities here. And, and Ms. Dana um, put a post out there the day, I think it was, right? Um, just reminding people of that, of that, of that nature there. Um, uh, with that said, that's all I have to report right now. Um, and I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, and so we will adjourn. Thank you. Miss Maxine, yes. I'd like to introduce myself to you now, so, since we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be for sure.